you very much, Nigel. Okay, so as Nigel said, I will tell you about the medic aspect of Sanjay Yoga, and as we heard, Sanjay Yoga is a spiritual um, meta, but it has been associated with health benefits. So I will tell you about the effects on the body, on the brain, on your health, and on diseases, mental and physical diseases. First of all, what is meditation? And Nigel has already explained more or less what meditation is. I will just say a few more words. So if you read the Oxford Dictionary, it says that meditation is thinking in silence. Now, first of all, you cannot think aloud. And secondly, thinking is, of course, the exact opposite of what meditation is as originally conceived in the East. So meditation, Patanjali was one of the first to talk about meditation, and he said that meditation is the cessation of thinking. It's the stopping of your thoughts, it's the control of your thoughts, the control of your attention. In the West, we, we know there are three states of consciousness, that's sleeping, dreaming, and thinking. But in the East, and we think that thinking is the highest state of consciousness, but the, in the East, it's very common knowledge that there is another state of consciousness. It's called the fourth state of consciousness, Tubi Abasta. And the fourth state of consciousness is the state of thoughtless awareness, mental silence, where you learn to stop your thinking. And this process of stopping your thinking has amazing benefits at the subjective level, but also objectively. And uh, you feel, when you stop, your thoughts are stopped, you feel uh, happy, you feel joy, and depending on the intensity, you can feel absolute bliss. So there are several subjective correlates, what you feel when you meditate, which I've listed here, and which, however, have health implications. And as I said before, in the West, we are not really interested in spiritual things, but we are very much interested in our health, and in fact, we are obsessed with our health. And it's the health benefits which have actually attracted all the interest in Western science. So over the last years, there has been a lot of studies on meditation because people have realized meditation actually leads to better health. And so what do you feel when you meditate? You feel an overwhelming calmness. And this is a, a calmness which is, goes much more beyond normal relaxation. Because when you relax, you relax the body. And if you lie on the sofa, you may be relaxed. But if you worry about the future, you're not really relaxed. So when you're thoughtless, you don't just relax the body, you also relax the mind and your brain. And you cannot do it with any other way. You can only do it by stopping to think, stopping to worry about the future, stopping to ruminate about the past and be in the present. So this overwhelming feeling of peace within calmness is associated with stress relief, and I'll show you later how. Uh, when you're mentally silent, you have a better mental balance. And this is because if you think about it, all mental disorders are actually characterized by thought, disorder, thought problems. If you have schizophrenia, you have paranoid thoughts. If you're obsessive compulsive, you have obsessive thoughts. If you're ADHD, you have racing thoughts. And if you're depressed, you have negative thoughts which ruminate, which you ruminate about. So it has also been shown that all disorders, all mental disorders, they have more mental clutter. This has been shown over recent years. And meditation, of course, is a reduction of the mental clutter, because that's what it is. You stop your thinking, so you have no mental clutter, or you have less mental clutter. So therefore, mental silence is a state of super mental balance, more than normal people have. So because if you meditate and you have less mental clutter than a normal person, you're super healthy and super balanced mentally. When you don't have any thoughts, you're much more concentrated and you're much more alert because you're pure consciousness without the content, which are the thoughts and the emotions. And if you go through life, the whole day you throw out your thoughts and your emotions into the world and you don't really see reality as it really is because you constantly, you have the intermediation of your thoughts and your emotions. So when you have no thoughts, you much more, you absorb reality as it really is. So for example, if you're now listening to me, you may be thinking of the dinner later, and you may have to inhibit your thoughts in order to actually listen or attend. If you have no thoughts, you absorb information much quicker. And it has been shown that children who meditate have better attention at school. Zen Buddhists who have meditated for a long time have better attention. And it has been associated with better productivity at work. 
because if you're more concentrated and have no matter clutter, you're actually more focused. Another very interesting feature, which I've said before, when you have no thoughts, you feel happy, you feel bliss, you feel joy. And this, of course, you, if you have these positive emotions during your meditation, because it's so peaceful and so pleasant, this state of mental silence, then you carry this over into, into daily life, and this leads to more positive emotions. And positive emotions, of course, protect you against depression, anxiety, affective disorders, and it's, of course, very good for you. And you have less negative thinking. Last but absolutely not least, to me this is the most important aspect of meditation, you achieve a state of emotional detachment. You, you, you enter witness state where you actually go beyond your thoughts because you're no longer thinking and you're no longer having your emotions, but you see them from a stepping back witness state. We call it in psychology a metacognitive awareness where you're beyond your thoughts and you can observe them. And that's, I think, the most important thing uh, of meditation, most important aspect. And if you remember, Buddha went out to find meditation because he realized there's a lot of suffering in the world. And how do you deal with the suffering? You cannot control the life events. We all have negative life events. You know, your parents will die eventually, people you love may die, you may have a divorce. Whatever happens to you, um, you cannot really control those life events. But what you can control is how you actually deal with those life events and how you perceive them. You can control your state of mind and your thoughts and your emotions. And that you do via meditation, and that's the only way. Only through meditation you can actually enter a witness state, which makes you emotionally more resilient. And I think this is the most important aspect of meditation, because who wouldn't want to be happy and sail through life in a sort of serene, happy, joyful way, without being carried away on a roller coaster of emotions constantly, depending on what happens to you. So I think this is crucial. And of course, the state of meditation uh, of thoughtless awareness, you may have seen, and it has been described in all mystical uh, uh, traditions of all cultures. Here are just a few names, Nirvana, Sahaj Samadhi, Satori, Yoga, which means union, Zen, Tao, and in the West we had our own meditation, uh, our own tradition of, of uh, mental silence, which were the Christian Gnostics, and Gnosis means, of course, knowledge, which means the knowledge of yourself, and that yourself, you're not just these thoughts and these emotions, but you're a different thing. You're actually a spiritual person which can go beyond the thoughts and emotions. So the claims I will try to prove to you today and show you medical evidence is that meditation, in fact, has an effect on the body because mental silence reduces stress and it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which restores bodily functions. I will show you that meditation has an effect on the brain. Uh, mental silence is a different state of consciousness. You activate different areas of the brain of deep attention, of um, uh, positive emotions, and there is a release of happy chemicals, which make you joyful. Now, meditation is a good way to prevent illness because mental silence leads to better physical and mental health. And lastly, I will show you that you can use it as a therapy so if you have any mental or physical problems, you can actually solve them with meditation. So what happens in the body? And first of all, we have already seen uh, a bit of an explanation of the chakra Charlie here. And what you will see here, let's just stop this for a moment. Um, this is the central nervous system here. Yeah? The central nervous system, this is the spinal cord, this is the brain, and the limbic area of the brain is quite important because I will talk about it later, lies within the brain in the middle, and this is a center for motion and motivation. So this is the central nervous system. What you will see next is actually the autonomic nervous system, which is also depicted here. This is the central channel. This is the left and the right uh, um, sympathetic nervous system. So these aren't just some sort of fancy lines, but these are actually, they correspond to a medical system, and in any medicine book you can read up the autonomic nervous system consists of the left and right sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And I will explain later a bit more what it is. Sorry. Let's watch the movie. So 
So this is the left and right sympathetic nervous system, and the middle channel is, corresponds to the parasympathetic nervous system. And the spiritual energy we have inside when we meditate actually passes through all these nerve plexuses. So this is the solar plexus, this is the, the cervical plexus, and it enters the limbic area of the brain. And when it enters the limbic area of the brain, we become thoughtless. All these different uh, chakras, they correspond to the nerve plexus and to the endocrine system. So, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system are very important and they need to be in balance. So, in daily life, you're either in this what is called the fight or flight mode, you activate the right or the left sympathetic nervous system, one is important for action, one is important for inhibition. And you, in the night, you, when you sleep, you activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So this system relaxes and restores all the bodily functions, while the other one is important for daily activities. Now they have to be in balance. So if you think you can survive with four hours of sleep a day, then you're sadly mistaken. You pay later with your health for, for this habit. Because it is important that your body gets restored. So the sympathetic nervous system is activated in daily activities, and the more stressed you are, the more it is activated. So what it does, it supplies a maximum blood to all the muscles for the daily activities. The uh, stress hormones are increased. There is more, uh, the lungs, the passages are dilated. You have increased heart rate, and if you're constantly stressed, this may actually affect your heart. And the, doing the rest, in the, uh, when you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, then the opposite happens, and you have a decreased heart rate. More blood is given to all the organs, which restores all the bodily functions which you've wasted during the day. Um, there is decreased activity of stress hormones, and the digestion is, is stimulated. So what research has shown, that meditation activates the parasympathetic nervous system more than rest. So that means you enter a state of hyper-rest, which is better than sleep. And this is, has been shown in many, by many studies conducted in India and in Australia. So what happens is there is a decrease in the heart rate, there is a decrease in the breathing rate, there is a decrease in pulse rate, in blood pressure, in oxygen metabolism, and this is anti-aging. And there's a decrease in other physiological parameters of stress. And I show you a few examples. So this is the blood pressure in people who have the controls is the red line. So these people doing 20 minutes rest, nothing really happens. These are people who have meditated for four weeks. So after 20 minutes of meditation only, the, the blood pressure goes down. And those who meditated for eight weeks have a stronger effect, and those who meditated for 12 weeks have a really strong effect. So in other words, if you have high blood pressure, you can reduce it by meditation. This is the heart rate. Again, the controls, and again, the more practice the people are in meditation, the more the heart rate goes down. This is, of course, very good. It protects your heart if you constantly have a reduction in heart rate on a daily basis. That's very good for you, and of course, all the other measures as well. This is a study by Dr. Chung from Philadelphia University, and she took people who had hypertension, and she gave them one week of intensive meditation. They had to meditate in a meditation hospital uh, every day for, I don't know, eight hours or so, and the blood pressure, the high blood pressure went down significantly uh, in the meditators, but not in the controls who were getting normal treatment in a normal hospital. So meditation is far better, and only after one week you can reduce your hypertension, which is quite impressive. So in conclusion, the state of mental silence reduces sympathetic activity, and what it means, it enhances the parasympathetic activity, which restores, and it restores all your bodily functions and de-stresses the body. Now, another very curious phenomenon, which if you may have noticed, if you meditated with us for a while, and if you knew, you will feel it at the end when we have the meditation. When you achieve the state of mental silence, you feel a cool breeze on the hands and on top of the frontal area. 
and the front tunnel is called front tunnel because it comes out like a fountain. So this cool breeze is described in the Bible, for example, it's called the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost, of course, means your own spiritual energy. And studies have actually shown that this isn't just something you imagine, because sometimes people say, when we ask you, do you feel cool breeze, you know, they, they think they have to say yes to please you, or they think you're sort of suggesting it, and that's why they feel it. This is not true. Uh, studies have shown, this is people during the rest period, and in the rest period, the temperature of the hand actually goes up a little bit, that's normal. But in meditation, the temperature goes down significantly. And this has been shown on the hands and on the top of the head. And some people, I feel it on the feet, for example, so I think it uh, can also be on the feet. So, in conclusion, the Haja Yoga meditation activates the parasympathetic nervous system and this restores your bodily functions. Now, what about the brain? And of course, the brain is important because if you can show that meditation leads to a different activation in the brain, then you have proof that it's not just thinking, but it's something else. Then you prove you're actually, in fact, entering an altered state of consciousness. And that's crucially important. So there have been um, several brain imaging studies. This is a study done by Simon Golochekin from Washington University. And what he showed is that when people meditate, there is an activity, um, a very slow wave activity coming from the limbic system called theta activity. This activity is there when you are, uh, when you are in, in deep focused attention and has been associated with creativity. And this activity was sort of focused over frontal and parietal areas, which are areas of deep attention. The next study was a study using MRI, which is a better resolve study in which I was involved in, and this was done by Dr. Uh, um, Sergio Hernandez, and that's him. So he used this MRI scanner to input people in the scanner. They had to meditate for, uh, I think, about 20 minutes. And in the initial stages of meditation, the meditators activated the same region we've seen before, so the right frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. So this is a, especially is a key area for deep attention and also for inhibition, because when you start to meditate, you inhibit your thoughts. So you activate this area of inhibition. But what is interesting is it was in both sides of the hemispheres, but as they went deeper into meditation, the, the activation became progressively more reduced, and then, as they go into a deep state of meditation, there's hardly any activity left in the brain. They just have a little bit of activity here on the right of the frontal lobe, which is this area of deep attention. So in other words, in meditation, you achieve a state of deep attention, of concentrated, relaxed activity, um, which is uh, mediating a, a concentr deep concentration. What uh, they also measured then uh, the effect of as people stop having thoughts, they feel joy, they feel bliss. And as they feel more and more bliss, again, they get this theta activity which comes from the limbic system and it focuses over the left frontal lobe, which is a key area for positive emotions. So essentially what the studies are showing that in fact, when you meditate, you activate areas of attention and of positive emotions. And this is of course, the objective correlate of this Sanskrit denomination of meditation, which is Sat Chit Ananda, which means being pure attention and pure joy. And just to show you here, the limbic system, the limbic system consists of seven nuclei, which is also interesting because we have seven chakras. And this is the limbic system deep in the brain. So this is what you activate when you're in meditation and it gives you joy and uh, happiness. Another very important thing uh, si Dr. Simon Golucek found is that when people meditate, there is less mental clutter. And the slide is a bit bad, I apologize for that. But essentially, this is showing chaotic complexity. In the brain, you have sort of complex chaotic firing. But if you have less chaotic firing, it means you have less mental clutter. And this chaotic firing, as I said before, the mental clutter is increased in people with schizophrenia, depression, autism, ADHD. And these are normal people doing rest, and these are the meditators. So the meditators have significantly less mental clutter. And that is, is very important because it means they have better mental balance. 
this is not a Sahaja Yoga meditation, but some people found that people who practice Zen Buddhism have not just, uh, what I showed you before was the activation of the brain, this is the structure of the brain, so these are long-term effects on the structure of the brain. So long-term Buddhist meditators have more thicker cortex in the same region we've seen before, which are activated, which are these attention areas, especially this here right frontal region. And furthermore, what's very important, they have normally, the, the thickness of this cortex reduces progressively with age. So these are the normals. But in the meditators, this process is delayed. So this suggests the meditation is anti-aging and actually leads to a, a delay of the normal aging process of those attention regions. And of course, if you think about it, meditation is attention training. You sit for half an hour and you actually concentrate and try to inhibit your thoughts. So, what happens at the chemical level in the brain? And I think this is becoming very exciting. We have in the brain so-called opioid receptors, and they're called opioid receptors because opium binds to them, morphine binds to them. Uh, and these opioids you can also release from within. And uh, beta endorphins, they attach to these opioid receptors. And beta endorphins are released when you're in love or when you do sports, but they're also released through meditation. And this is very interesting because this could explain why actually people um, get, um, of course, feel the joy and the happiness, apart from the activation of the limbic system that I've shown before, but it's also, you release happy chemicals in the brain. What is inter interesting as well is those opioids, of course, the beta endorphins, they enhance the immune system and they have shown to slow down cancer cells. So this could explain why some people uh, can be cured with meditation from severe diseases like cancer, because if you have a continuous release of beta endorphins which strengthen your immune system, slow down cancer cells, this, then this can easily explain it and therefore this is not a miracle cure, but it actually can be explained. Other studies have shown that meditation releases dopamine. This is also released, this is also a release through cocaine or amphetamines. So this is another drug which is important, another substance which is important for feeling pleasure. So this explains why people who meditate actually get addicted to meditation. Because you get this constant high in your brain without paying all the side effects of, of drugs. So you can actually achieve a state of pleasant sort of joy continuously. And uh, other meditations have shown that there is an increase in serotonin. This is a drug which is typically lower in depression, so this could explain why uh, meditators are less likely to be depressed. Melatonin, which is important for sleep and also strengthens the immune system. So again, this could again explain why people, when they meditate, they, they find you can sleep far easier. easier and again, it can enhance the immune system. And GABA, which is important for cognitive functions like attention, and there is a decrease in stress hormones. So the last study I want to talk about on the, on the brain section is actually a study which was the very first to prove that meditators are more detached. And I like this study a lot because it's the only one I actually tried to, to prove this point. And this was done again by Dr. Simon Goluchakin from Washington University. What he did, he showed meditators and non-meditators a really horrible movie which is called Funny Games by Michael Haneke. If you've seen that movie, it's, it's, I have not been able to watch it, but it's actually, uh, it's supposed to shock you and to show the, the violence in our society. So it's a, a video of two, a, a movie of two psychopathic teenagers which go into a house and they kill everybody. They start by the dog, then the woman, then the, the kids, and then the father. So this movie is really quite terrible. And they showed this movie to this <laughs> poor people. And as you can see, the blue are the controls, the red are the meditators, and at the subjective psychological level, so these are all negative emotions, so the, the controls have far more negative emotions. So they felt more disgust, more anxiety, more sadness, more unhappiness after watching the movie. And the red ones are the meditators, so they had much less negative emotions than 
the non-meditators. Then he measures on the skin. When you're stressed, you have more sweat on the skin, so you can measure the, the level of stress level at, at the body. And at the skin level, the meditators had significantly less uh, skin response than the control. So at the body level, the meditators also were less affected by this negative moving. Lastly, he measured the brain. And this is a gamma activity. Gamma activity is activated, is, is released when you have very intense emotions. So during the rest, the meditators and the controls didn't differ, but after the movie, the controls have this high gamma activity, this really high gamma activity. So they were really stressed out at the brain level by the movie, while the meditators kept their cool as well at the brain level. So in other words, the meditators kept their cool at the psychological level, they were less affected at the body level, and less affected at the brain level. And this, I think, is absolutely crucial because this is sort of proof that meditation makes me more detached and more able to cope with stress and negative events. And as I said before, this is important because it improves your emotional resilience. So in conclusion, the state of mental silence is associated with relaxed brain activity of deep attention and positive emotions. It increases uh, happy chemicals which stabilize your mood and your affect and it makes people more detached at the psychological, at the brain, and at the body level. Now, what, what about the effect on your health? This is a very interesting study by Dr. Ramesh Manocha from Australia, and he tested 350 Sahaja Yoga meditators, and he compared them to a group of people, a mixed group who practiced all sorts of meditation, Hatha Yoga, mindfulness meditation, and so on and the Australian norm, and the norm consisted of thousands of people. What he found is the Sahaja Yoga meditators were better in their general health, in their social function, and in their mental health. They weren't better in the physical function, but that's because Sahaja Yoga is not a sport. Then he tested, what is it what makes them better? So he tested, is it the hours they meditate? Is it the amount of mantras they say? Is it how many meetings they attend? and nothing was related to the, the, the benefits other than one thing, and that was the frequency of the mental silence. So this is what works. And here you see the national average. Here you see people who meditate, but they only become thoughtless less than once per month. They have no benefit. Here are the ones who are thoughtless once or twice per month, no benefit. But here are the ones who are once or twice thoughtless, and you see they are significantly better in their mental health than the national average. Here are the ones who are once or twice per day mental, mental, uh, thoughtless, they are also much better, and the ones who are thoughtless several times per day, they are just have an amazing mental health, as you can see here. So in conclusion, it's the state of mental silence which works, nothing else. But what this means also, that means if you meditate, you need to find a meditation which teaches you to achieve the state of mental silence. So, for example, mindfulness meditation may be very nice, but it's not teaching you to empty your mind. It's not, we are doing mind emptiness. Mindfulness is mindfulness, you concentrate on your thoughts. But you really need to have, you need to practice a meditation which teaches you to achieve the state of mental silence. Otherwise, you have no health benefits. He found exactly the same on general health, so this is physical and mental health, so exactly the same. This is the average. These are people who are thoughtless several times per day, a significant improvement of their uh, general health, and so on. And then here, if you the same, if you meditate for years and you never go thoughtless, you may also not have benefits, so you have to try a bit harder to, to get there. <coughs> Then he measured exactly the same on a questionnaire which picks up anxiety and depression in the population. And what he found is the yogis were significantly less distressed on this questionnaire, so they're far less likely to be anxious and depressed. And again, the benefits were associated with the frequency of the thoughtless awareness. So here you can see those who are several times per day thoughtless, they are in the very low risk category. So these people will never... Uh, will never be, be, become depressed or anxious. And then it goes down, so the less 
often you achieve thoughtless awareness, the less protected you are against depression and anxiety. This is a study by Simon uh, Golochekin where he looked at the personality of yogis versus personality of non-yogis. He found that the meditator are significantly less depressed, significantly less neurotic, have less paranoid thoughts, less anxious, and less difficulties in identifying and expressing emotions. So these are the long-term effects. So in conclusion, Sahaja Yoga meditation has a significant effect on your health, but the benefits are associated with the state of mental silence. So that's the key thing. And that's what you should be aiming for. The more often, the better. Now, what are the effects on the illness? And of course, we've seen that in meditation you have less mental clutter, so obviously you're, you're, it, it seems logical that meditators should have better mental health. And this is exactly what has been found. This is a study by Dr. Adam Morgan in Exeter University. He took a group of people with depression and he gave them Sahaja Yoga meditation, nothing, all the treatment you get in the NHS called cognitive behavioral therapy. And this treatment is supposed to work, but in this study it didn't work, but Sahaja Yoga meditation worked significantly better, as you can see, and that was the only significant improvement so the depressed people became significantly less anxious after six weeks of Sahaja Yoga meditation, less depressed, and they had less general mental illness. This is a study on anxiety by Dr. Chung from Philadelphia University, and she uh, gave 66 Sahaja Yoga meditators and controls. They had, she gave the meditators a very intensive one-week treatment in the meditation hospital, and as you can see, the meditators significantly improved in their anxiety, while the controls got a normal hospital treatment, and they actually became worse. And the difference was, of course, highly significant. So meditation was much better than the traditional hospital treatment, which actually made them worse. This is an, a study on work stress, and as you know, we are all quite stressed at work, and it's a big problem. Work stress is associated with a lot of health problems. Uh, in this study, Dr. Ramesh Manocha from Australia, he tested people, he gave them uh, eight weeks of Sahaja Yoga meditation, or he gave them relaxation response. And relaxation response is something which is used in TM. So as you can see, the relaxation response had no effect, so it didn't make them better. But Sahaja Yoga meditation made it, these people who were stressed and worked significantly better, so the stress symptoms became significantly better, so these are all improvement scores. The depression became significantly better, and the anxiety didn't quite reach significance, but as you can see, they're also better in the anxiety. This is a study on ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So these are children who are restless, impulsive, and have problems with attention. So of course we thought that meditation would be good because it makes them calmer, and it improves attention, and we've seen it enhances attention areas. And in fact, this is what happened. So these people got six weeks, they were children, they got six weeks of Sahaja Yoga meditation together with their parents, and they improved significantly in their ADHD symptoms. What is interesting that the effect was similar to that of stimulant medication. Hyperactive children normally get Ritalin, and it improves the symptoms, but it has side effects. So it, it affects the sleep, it affects the growth, and of course, if you can have an improvement without any side effects through meditation, then that's better, especially in a child which has, still has a developing brain. And they all improved, although most of them even stopped their Ritalin, their medication. Although they stopped or reduced their medication, they still improved significantly. <laughs> this is a study on drug consumption. Uh, this is done by Dr. Wolfgang Hackel from Austria. So he tested uh, people who entered meditation and he followed them up for a year and asked them questions about their drug use. What is quite interesting is that after only one week, almost 60% of, of drug users stopped their drug consumption. This is really remarkable because they were partly, some of them were heroin abusers, cocaine, uh, amphetamines, and what he found that after a year, only 7% still took their drugs. 
And you know, I work in a mental hospital, and it's just, there is no drug, and there, there is no treatment, and which works as well as this. So this is really quite remarkable. You don't find this anywhere else. So what about physical illness? I've shown you before that meditation enhances the parasympathetic nervous system, which restores your bodily function. And of course, this should have an effect on your physical body. And this is exactly what has been shown. Again, this is a study by Dr. Chung, which I've shown you before, where people with hypertension significantly improved with one week of intensive meditation. There have been several studies in India who have shown that people improve with epilepsy. And epilepsy is quite a severe disease. You have epileptic attacks quite frequently, and you have to take quite severe drugs with, with severe side effects. Uh, in this, uh, they sh these studies, what they all of them showed that the number of epileptic attacks can be significantly reduced with meditation. So this is after uh, three months, and this is after six months. This is a study by Dr. Ramesh Manucha from Australia, and he found that meditation has a significant effect on asthma. These people meditated for two months, two, two times weekly, and the asthma you can measure in an objective way, they had a significant reduction of their asthma um, uh, indicators, of the severity of their asthma. Uh, what is interesting about this study is that after two months, they stopped the treatment, the meditation, and then he followed them up after another month. And what happened is after the month when they stopped the meditation, they all went back to the same severity of asthma they had before. So what this means is if you use meditation to cure any of your illnesses or diseases, you have to do it for life, you have to do it regularly, and, and you can't just stop when you notice you, you feel some health benefits because they will come back. So meditation really is a discipline for life. And I think that's the reason why few people use it, because you have to do it regularly and forever if you want to have the benefits. And some people find it easier to you know, take a pill than to actually sit down 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening, and get yourself disciplined and go into meditation. But as you see, it's as effective as drugs. This is a study on menopause. And again, there was a significant reduction of the hot flushes in women with men in the menopause phase. What is interesting is the effect was similar to hormone replacement therapy. And hormone replacement therapy has been associated with increased cancer risk. So again, if you can avoid the cancer risk, it's better to use meditation. So in conclusion, the Haja Yoga meditation has a significant beneficial effect on your mental and your physical health. So, to conclude, I've shown you that Sahaja Yoga meditation has a significant effect on the body because it activates the parasympathetic nervous system and it restores your bodily functions. It has an effect on the brain. It's a different state of consciousness. You activate areas of attention. You activate the limbic areas which give you happiness. And you release good, happy, mood-stabilizing uh, neurochemicals in your brain. Uh, it prevents disease because it gives you better mental and physical health. It's a disease therapy, so if you have any illnesses, you can use it to treat your illnesses through regular meditation. And as I said, uh, as I showed you, it has an effect on the range of mental illnesses and physical illnesses. And there has never been any, any negative effects. All the effects have always been positive. What is important, as I said before, is the benefits are associated with the state of mental silence. So it's the mental silence which works and nothing else. So if you meditate, you have to try to achieve the state of mental silence as often as possible. And that will be associated with better health at the mental and physical level. So I, I think I've talked enough. And what we will do now is we'll have a meditation guided by uh, the founder of Sajja Yoga. And if you follow my last slide, we will go exactly there into the limbic system, which is here, which is also where the last slide is. And that's where we're going now. So you have heard about all the fantastic things which can happen to you. And hopefully you feel today this mental silence where we're going to go now, which is the kingdom of God within, the paradise within, which you can have. Here we go.
And if you want to know more, there are a few web pages where you can read a bit more about this yoga. Thank you.